Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. The Network Berg here. In today's video, we'll be going over creating our first lab with EvenG. I'm super excited about this. I really enjoy labbing and this is really something I love to share with other people. So in previous videos, I have shown you how to install Eve as well as how to import some images. You might have gotten a glimpse of how to add some nodes and such, but this video will really be focusing on adding nodes, connecting devices, and just making everything work and look a bit better. So we will be using Eve Community and we will jump into the video very shortly. I just wanna ask people or remind people, please subscribe to the channel. It helps grow the channel, like and reshare with your friends. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so let's get to it. Let's log into the Eve server. Now that we've logged in, you should be greeted with this page. If you haven't added any labs yet, uh, it's quite easy to add a lab. You can just click on the add new lab button. And from here, you can give the lab a name. So let's call it uh, new lab two. You can assign a version number to the lab. You can add an author, which is useful if you plan on sharing your labs with other people so that they can see it was actually you that created the lab. You can add a description. So let's just say adding nodes or whatever you, you want to make the description, like what's the lab about. You don't have to do it, but it, it's a feature that is there if you want to. And then lastly, you can specify tasks as well. So this ties in with if you're trying to share your labs with other people, you can maybe make the labs um, like objective orientated where you tell people, okay, I've, I've added these labs, the BGP is not working, can you check why it's not working? And then you can log onto the, the routers and try and figure out why is the BGP down? And that's what the tasks is for. The fields aren't required. The, the main thing that you need is the name, like the name and version, but the version's already gonna be filled in. So just give it a name, click save, and there we go, we've got a lab. It is basically a blank canvas. And from this blank canvas, we can draw whatever we want. So we can start to add nodes to our topology. And you can do that by either clicking on this plus button, add an object. So there's nodes, networks, pictures, shapes, and text. So we'll go through all of them very quickly. So the first thing that we're gonna add is just a node. So if you were following any of the other videos, you, you probably already added a node, but it's basically like a router or a firewall or even a server, just something that you add onto the topology that's gonna be virtualized. So in this topology, I might add something like two 40 gate firewalls. So let me quickly do that. Let's add two to 40 gates. You saw I said two, it made two of the firewalls. You can move the nodes around how you want to by just left clicking and holding and then you can move it however you want. And then finally, to connect a node, just hover over the object. You'll see this uh, orange connector cable. Drag that, so click it, drag it to where you wanna connect it and release. This will bring up a new screen where you can select which ports you want to connect. So in my case, I'm going to maybe connect uh, port four to port four and maybe use that for HA or something. I'm going to save that. Now, perfect, I've got two firewalls and they've both been connected with a cable. Next thing I want to do is maybe add a couple of routers. So let's say I want to add three Mikrotik routers. This might be my provi provider routers. So I'll use this to maybe act like I'm a little ISP. So let's throw these routers by the firewalls, put them like that, and let's connect them as well. Just drag the cables into the nodes. One thing to take note of with Eve, uh, and it's the community edition, whenever you connect cables, you can only do it while the node is off. You cannot connect the cable while the node is online. That is, however, a feature in the pro version, but the pro version is something that you pay additionally for. Okay, so now we've connected cables for our routers and our firewalls, and let's maybe add one more router. Let's make it the Cisco CSR1000V and that's fine let's just save that i'm going to throw it there and i'm maybe just going to connect this to this microtech router so now i've got a little lab i've got a cisco router i've got some microtech routers as well and two 40 net devices they are all connected and we did this all from the nodes 
Next, we'll add a network. So networks are, um, you can think of this maybe as a switch. So if you use the bridge, this is literally everything you connect to the bridge, we'll be able to see something on the corresponding VLAN, or if there's no VLAN, it will just see it on the default VLAN. That's what the bridge is useful for. But the thing that I mainly come here for is this management cloud. So the management cloud is actually your NATed interface. So whenever you use the management cloud, you can think of this as your internet to break out from this lab to maybe the real internet. Um, you could also potentially use this to come from your own computer back into the virtual lab so that you can maybe access some of the devices over a GUI, like uh, through your web browser or maybe a client like with uh, Mikrotik on Winbox. So let's just add a management cloud here. And the management cloud, I'm going to connect to the firewalls. Let me maybe do that. Perfect. So now we've added a network there. Next thing I want to show you, the picture I won't go into now. Um, it's basically just a picture that you add into the lab. It's really useful for if you maybe have a visio diagram and you want to use your visio diagram to show the topology, but I'm not going to go, go into that in this video. Um, next up is a custom shape. So custom shapes, if you've ever watched um, or looked at somebody's designs, you, you probably see the shapes like it's a square and it's um, making the diagram actually look a lot better and cleaner because you understand that each box represents some part of the network or it's doing or fulfilling some function. So that's what you can use the custom shapes for. So you can make squares or circles. You can give them names if you want to. You can choose if it's solid or dashed. I tend to like to use dashed and you can select the border width, border color, and also just a background color. And you can change this by just clicking on the color and now we can make the color whatever we want. So this one, I'm just gonna leave pretty blank or basic. It's just gonna be black border with a white color on the background. I'm gonna bring that to my firewalls and we can imagine this might be the HA for the firewalls just to show you that there's HA there. Let's uh, create another shape, custom shape. Let's make this a circle. We can make this border solid maybe. Let's use a color for this. So I might use this purple for the border and then the same purple, but just lighter for the actual inside, the full. So let's fit this for our Mikrotix. You can maybe imagine this could be an OSPF area. There we go, perfect. And then lastly, we might create another shape, another square. Let's leave the solid as well, make it a different color. Let's maybe try blue, dark blue for the border and a very light shade of blue for the full. And now that I look at it, I don't actually like the border being solid. So let's say I wanted to change this quite easy as well. You can just right click the image, say edit, brings up this nice little box. So from this box, you can change it from border type from solid to dash. And that already looks better to me, you see. Um, you can add transparency as well so that you, there is no fill if you like that. You can also rotate and it's the same for text when we get there. So you can rotate your objects from here when you edit them. All right, so let's quickly just add text. It's pretty much the same as we were doing now for the circles and squares. So I might say this is area zero and this is gonna be for the o OSPF. We've got a font size, so you can make this bigger or smaller, but you can also, when you um, move the images around, you can increase the size that way as well. But we'll use a bold font maybe and I might change the color to red because that pops pretty well in diagrams. So let me show you. So it's, it's the same for all objects as well. When you select it, it's got this little box. When the mouse changes, you can basically change the size and ratios and such. I just want to edit the text because the text is quite nice if you put transparency on. Because then it doesn't make this white fill inside the box and then it doesn't look um, bad. Let's do the same for this box. Just to show you again, you can select. Once the mouse changes, you can resize it however you want. Perfect. Let me create another text object. Maybe call this AS 
65432 and I might make this orange. Let's also just edit this to be transparent and I'm going to move this into this little cloud. So this is maybe for BGP now. I've got a autonomous system number for this router. It will connect to this Mikrotik, which could also be, well, it, it will be a BGP neighbor in this case, but I'm just showing you that you can add these objects however you want. And that's the fun part about creating a network diagram. Like you're actually creating a diagram while you're labbing. That's really fun. That's really cool. Um, and I enjoy that a lot. And I'm sure a lot of other people also maybe find uh, a sense of just peace in doing that. I mean, it's really fun for me to do and I enjoy it a lot. So I think I've shown you how to add nodes now. Um, just one more thing, how you can edit nodes. You can go to this nodes button and here you can change the names of the nodes. Firewall 2. Uh, let's call this R1, R2, R3, R4, or let's call this the CE. And when I close this box, you will note all the names updated for the routers. In order to start a router or node, you just need to right click it and you can say start, or you can select all of the devices, right click and say start selected. This will bring all the devices in the topology online so that you can connect to them through PuTTY or whatever um, console program that you enjoy to use. So that is how you would typically start the devices in order to lab them. So in my case, I can just click on the device and it will bring up this little PuTTY box for me. And I should be able to log in once the device is booted up. Because these devices, they function as real devices. And that, that's what I want to stress across. It, not even as, it is a real device. This is a real firewall that you brought online in this lab. It's not a fake thing. It's not, not to discredit Packet Tracer, but it's got the full functionality of a real production line device. And that is what you need to um, use. It, it will help you with your labbing to understand the concepts because you're working on real equipment and it doesn't matter if you break it because this is virtual space. All right, <laughs> I just wanted to say that as well. So we've covered how to add all of the nodes. Um, just maybe one thing I'd like to show you as well is if you go to the status, this would also show you the CPU usage, well, the system resources of your EVE server. We could close this off. We can also go to the lab details. This will show you the description that we added as well as the UUID of this lab. And then lastly, just a few fun things. Let's say if you're working on the lab and you're clicking on stuff, you see I'm dragging this around accidentally. If you click on lock lab, it, you can't drag any of the options or objects around anymore. So this is great for you to, that you can use the lab. You can still click on everything and use it, but you're not going to accidentally move nodes around. Uh, we can unlock the lab and then we can move things around again. And very important to note, uh, if you want to stop the lab or close it, you first need to shut down all of the devices. You cannot close the lab while the devices are running. So let's stop them. And one more thing, the zoom. I mean, you, you can see you can zoom in, zoom out. And there's quite a lot of canvas space. If you think about it, you can build a monster network if you want to. I probably advise against running all the devices at the same time because then you're probably just going to kill your EVE server, but the possibilities are, are limitless. Really, you could run a whole ISP off of this box and you could learn so much. So I'm going to end the video off here. I've shown you everything that I think that you need in order to create diagrams or topologies in EVE. Uh, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.